Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Caesars Southern Indiana, the site of the Derby City Classic. Behind me, all kinds of tournaments going on, but it's all about what is in front of us right now. This is a beautiful diamond Bigfoot table. Yeah, Bigfoot, five by 10 foot table, 20% larger than a regular nine foot tournament table. Along with that, 16 of the greatest players on the planet all battling it out to be the champion. It's single elimination action, and today we're gonna find out who moves into the final four. It's time to meet the players for this next match. Three-time European champion, 2019 World Nine Ball champion, and the 2020 Moscone Cup champion. He's sponsored by Qtech, Diamond, and Tom from Moscow, Russia. Make some noise for Fedor Gorst. And his opponent is a world eight ball, nine ball, and 10 ball champion, two-time U.S. Open champion, and seven-time Moscone Cup champion for Team Europe. He's sponsored by Predator, Rassan, Tiger, Q World, and Tom from Pontefract, England. Make some noise for the dynamite, Darren Appleton. <laughs> they are lagging for the break. Our referee is Dwayne Payne, and sending it up to Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones in the AccuStats booth. Things are getting serious here at the Bigfoot Challenge. Today's matches are for $4,000, and my partner, Danny DiLiberto, says they will buy lunch in Paris. Welcome, everyone. Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones are here with you. And, Jeremy, uh, any pre-match thoughts here? Well, a little disturbing on the lag there from Fetter. He usually lags it pretty well, missed it by, by some mark, and Darren's going to break first. But I think Darren's going to play even better than he did in the first match. You expect Fetter to be as solid as ever. Uh, Federer coming off a Banks match here just a few m moments ago. That's why we got a little bit of a late start. But uh, should be a very competitive match. I mean, most would figure that Darren's got to take advantage of most of his opportunities. Uh, he's got to break the ball as well. And really just be Daz other than that. I mean, he's a competitor. He's a fighter. So, uh, you know, he's faced all these types of opponents, whether they're in their prime or not. Terrific stroke mechanics for Darren Appleton. Uh, you and I were just kind of talking about that before the match. And now he's uh, really kind of re-engaged himself in the sport. He's been maybe two or three years off where he hasn't been in his peak form. But, uh, he certainly looks to be rounding into shape. He played a, he won his match. And it was against uh, Roland Garcia. He played a 877 here on the 10-foot table. That's no joke. You've got to be a heck of a player. And that's world elite quality performance. Yeah, and besides the beginning of that match, it felt like he played a pretty, a little higher standard than that number, really. Uh, you know, and I think for Darren, along with myself, you know, I'm, I'm not in that position. Darren's quite a bit younger than me and in the position to still play the game at a super high level. But I think, you know, if I was around Darren's age, I would be in, very inspired. I think that's an easy way all the young players, all the great competition, I think that makes it easy to want to get back into the game and get, get to your peak. Uh, Darren wants to win more titles, and with the players we have coming up today and the players that are established already today, you get some nice uh, nice wins, you know yeah. what I mean? It would be something to remember to, to, to still win some titles, and, and that's kind of what Darren does. He wins titles. He's only 43 years old, so he's got a long ways to yeah. go yet. Kind of an interesting break. Uh, he broke 20 miles an hour, 20.6. But uh, notice the 10 ball didn't really move, nor the 6. We haven't seen that so far where they're all clumped up right in the rack area like they didn't come apart. Yeah, as great as the templates are, you can still give yourself a little bit of a funny rack, especially if you keep finagling with the balls, it seems. The more you touch them, the easier it is to give yourself something that's not a, you know, a perfect rack. And now with the five hanging, or excuse me, the four hanging, he can do some things off the five, get to the back side of it maybe. You wouldn't go after the cluster right here? Um, I don't know. You know, you can chop the four on the side and come two rails into the cluster pretty easily, right? So I don't know with the eight. If the eight wasn't there, Mark, I'd definitely go into the cluster right now. But otherwise, I think you're supposed to play maybe aggressively off of this shot. Or maybe get to the back side of the five. Maybe get where he's at now. I think the five's makeable from where he's at now, Mark. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's get, a great position. The only thing is it's not as easy to play position from as if they were open. But, yes, I think, I think you're right. If he just goes a little high inside and brings the cue ball right back where he's at now. And if he doesn't feel good, he could go three rails around into that position, which you wouldn't want to do unless you had to. Yeah, yeah that's going to nice be shot. just fine there. Yeah. A little stretched. but Now, it looks to me he's got to draw this. Follow really flirting a little bit. And if you overdraw it, you can maybe skinny by the eight and hook yourself between the six. Yeah, I'm trying to see here. He's going to push the six a little bit with draw. I think he gets into the top of the eight, though, mm -hmm. with draw, so off the ten. He could follow it mildly, though. Now, mildly's okay. But it's going to be, you're going to have to play the six down table if he follows, don't you think? Yeah, or I mean, you, you could hold actually kind of thin on the six a little maybe, but I, I still like the draw. And how the cue ball responds really has to do with how the five enters the pocket, thick or thin or in the heart. Yeah, it should draw off the ten into the eight, it looks like. Yeah, just oh, caught, caught it man. a little skinny. Great. A tremendous shot. Now we can remove the template. <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised the referee hasn't come in yet. I'm surprised. Yeah, feeder doesn't want to cheat. Yeah, it's so distracting visually. Even if it doesn't impact the hit, it's just well, it's, I, it's a you look know, that you never shoot at. Yeah, and I do believe at a light speed it can impact. Right. It, it can affect hits, you know, so. And he's not going to be shooting this at a super heavy speed, you wouldn't think. Just a one rail. You know, you wouldn't say Fetter's the guy for the one pocket, but he's still a guy that's in the mix for the all-around. I don't know how the banks is going for him, but he's a great banker. Uh, of course, his nine ball speaks for himself. We're here at the 10-foot, so he's first concentrating here, but I think he's a threat to make a, a lot of cash this week. He's the kind of guy that makes it very easy to root for because uh, he's not prone to emotional outbursts or anything that's a little bit off-putting. He, he works hard, and uh, people like that who possess good stroke mechanics are hardworking and put the sport above themselves are the type of people that are very endearing. Yeah, he's a, he's a humble guy and a humble player. But he's a confident guy, I'll tell you that. Uh, he's, you know, yeah. You may not see it all the time or hear about it from him, but very confident player. And yeah, he's always exuded that. I talk about him a lot as far as when teaching or just to other really great players trying to improve that he really relies on his reps, meaning that when he's in the match, he recognizes tough shots just like all of us do but he really rec you know relies on his reps and practice to get through all those tough shots and process and 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 make those shots look a little more like you know you're never gonna sit here you know the cliche is all of them should look the same well that's not very realistic <laughs> mm -hmm. you know you can tell a tough shot from an easier shot but all you want to do is get them you know your practice gets them a little closer to looking the yeah. same is what it is and then you process it the same, and uh, meaning he goes through his little steps prior to each shot, and you can tell he does the same when practicing. It isn't just all of a sudden in the match. Oh, let me look at my shot. Let me go from behind the ball. Let yeah, me, yeah. Let me think about where I'm going with the cue ball. That's all done in practice as well. Yeah, Vince Lombardi says winning isn't a sometimes thing. It's an all-the-time thing. And you don't do it right some of the time. You do it right all the time, whether anybody's looking or not. Well, you know, I've watched Fetter uh, versus other pros when they do, like, drills, for instance. Now, a lot of pros they get to doing drills. They don't think about the cue ball prior to the shot. They, You know, a drill gets them just getting down and shooting. They got a choice on the next shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where you watch Fetter go through those drills, it's a process each shot. He's not just wanting the cue ball to wander somewhere. He wants to be in tune. He, he puts in way more additional work than uh, the average pro. And it shows in his results. 
It's okay. not magic what happens. Is that a dry break? Yes, it is. And okay. we talked about the speed on the first two days. It seems like the guys that are getting up around 20 or so, Shane exception, uh, are over 20. They're not making balls as often as the guys around 18, 18 and a half, maybe 19, that being on the speed gun. Funny shot here if the two doesn't pass the 10. Funny to get from the two to the three, that's for sure. All right, well, it must pass the 10. Looks like he's got to come two rails in with some nice speed between the eight and five, huh? Or can he just go at the five and not worry? Because you've got to gain an angle on the three to get to the four to get back to the five. So this is touchy. I don't know if he catches the third rail here, Mark. Nice opening miss here. And you can see by that's where he had to hit the ball to get the cue ball where it's at now at that speed. So... He would have either had to shoot harder if he hits the two ball heavier or, you know, uh, cue ball would have ended up way short had he pocketed that ball. Yeah, and it's a it's a funny thing, right? You, you get just way more settled when you can catch that third rail with the cue ball. But when you have to float in, even the mm -hmm. great players that, you know, that third rail, that reference maybe, uh, feeling the, cu the cue ball hit that cushion really helps the stroke, it seems like. And, I would kick two rails at this. He's going to the back rail. And I understand he could hit the 10 and have a lot of good things happen. But that, notice how clear the, that side of the table is yeah. where he's kicking the two. So not much congestion there. And this is what I kind of thought besides right. making it. Where's, where's the protection, right? And even if you make it, well, then what? Yeah. I mean... So, yeah, maybe not the most prudent decision because it was always going to have the cue ball coming down table towards the two and the likelihood that you sell out a good shot. It was a f maybe an easier hit one rail. Yeah. But it had less value. So Yeah, I thought the two rails wrap in the corner was not a hard hit for him. Now, tough shot here, long and straight-ish. He's got to really show some power here. Oh, wow, he's not even. Does a three pass the five? Clearly does. There's, there's no way he's now going to figure out that it doesn't. So. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> but, man, I've, you know, I've tried to get used to the monitor, like being able to look at the monitor and tell what's going on on shots like this. And it sure looked like the five had it covered up. Now he's got to hit this pure, obviously. Got to keep the three on the rail. Oh, sweet stroke there. That was, that was maybe... Maybe he reminded himself of the two ball. He was a little timid right through the delivery, and he said, I'm going to go ahead and deliver the cue here, even mm -hmm. though the three's tight. Yeah, on the two ball, like you said, floating in there, two cushions is a much less familiar shot than the three railer. So then maybe first shot of the match there, he's kind of tentative, and then that's how it reflected uh, such a uh, distant miss uh, or uncharacteristic miss. Well, he's got to make a nice stroke here just to get a thin cut on the five. Now, we're going to get a great view here, if this is the uh, camera we stay with, of what the uh, back arm does on the stroke. Here, with power, it's going to have to power up. And so you can see his upper arm stays pretty steady as he comes through the ball. Hinda collapse there. Yeah, and like we talked about, whenever you create that momentum, there's nothing wrong with a hair of collapse after pretty impact. much the stroke is, is complete, right? That's a pretty natural thing you'll see from a lot of the greats. It's just residual. It's not yeah. an option. That's, yeah, it's just going to happen. Go somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Earl's one that, that, that possessed that really well. You could see Mika. Mika had that slight little elbow drop at the end. You have to have good timing. You can't do it at various stages of the swing. Right. Touchy little shot here. and Does he just come one rail for the six in the side where he's kind of skewing right now? Oh, he went twice, and that's you got to be on point with that one to go twice. I mean, you got to be pretty uh, comfortable with the slick table. That could easily have fallen off in that corner. 
Well, he he overcut the ball, uh, so uh, that's how he got his speed was off by such a dramatic amount. The the ball went into the pocket on the high side of the pocket. I'll tell you what, though, if he gets out here, he he's overcut, overcut it. it. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say he could do a lot for his confidence moving on in this match. It felt like he didn't have as good timing. He didn't have that good pause locked in. He, that was a kind of a tentative stroke. And he got down on it a hair quicker than he had the previous four or five shots. <laughs> it was obvious to me he was going to be a, attacking there. Most of these guys aren't, aren't playing safe on even the tough shots. Really nice. A variation of what I was telling you about yesterday, Mark, a shot you really just got to have a little thin on a ball going down the rail that you just got to come out one rail without using another cushion. Comes up a lot. Have we had Nick Varner show up here too? I haven't yet? seen him. Okay. but uh, Is he coming was, in today? Uh, or? Well, he was supposed to come in yesterday. Okay. You never know. <laughs> okay. Look at his banner every day here. <laughs> yeah, he's right there. Yeah. And Federer's doing a lot of what he did in his first match, just getting a shot. And hitting the heart of the pocket with every ball. This will be for a two-game lead here, early stages. He's playing a perfect th thousand thus far. Doris is off and running with a two-game lead. As we hit into rack three, he'll have the break. Pretty nice crowd here, filled with great people. A lot of good folks out there. I was talking to some people in the arena earlier. Everybody's eager to see how the day shakes out because we got nothing but one great match after the other coming up. Yeah, Shaw and SBB. There's Phil Wyndham. He's wearing his red beret in honor of Prince, I guess. And then <laughs> One of our biggest winners of the event thus far, Jay Diddy Sward, right here. Got his headset on. He's tuned in, listening. He does a great job on the commentary as well. Very knowledgeable guy. Always trying to uh, create another income source in case his main career doesn't work out. He's got the commentary thing backing up. Now, Darren got to practice the break quite a bit, waiting on Fetter to finish that Banks match. So, I feel like he should be fairly tuned in. Q-ball got away. Yeah. Oh. The one's tracking. The, oh. the twos. Thought that one was going to hang up again. <laughs> he yeah. hesitated momentarily. That one Tw pocket right there, it seems Tw like the balls hang up the most easily. 20.5 on the break, Demon. Man, uh, Darren's going to love it because he just practiced this shot. Yeah, right. Now the cue ball's going into the nine, which is distracting and comfortable. Yeah. I wonder if he's really, you know, it's the type of shot if you try to cue downward on the ball, right, you may not get much movement, right? So going into the nine, I think, is okay. You just got to take your chances. Pretty shot. Now he doesn't want to catch this seven coming in if he can. Love to avoid that. Everything else dresses up real nice. Doesn't want the seven to move somewhere and cause some problems. I think the seven almost has to move. It'd take a, just a perfect shot. Yeah. Ooh, man, that's that almost moved down in front of the but five. You had no choice. Yeah. The seven was so blocking that you couldn't be that cute and just say, well, I'm just going to play to that little tiny part. You just have to take your medicine if that happens. As it turned out, it worked out great. And look at this layout. Yeah, Darren not taking much time either, playing at a pretty nice pace. Just roll this in, get you a hair of an angle. He decided to come across a little more, now draws the ball probably into position. Well, he could still stun. Watch out. Watch out. The thing when he stunned there, he didn't really broaden it much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times you'll broaden that and slowly come into a little more a little more angle on the seven. But he must have been pretty flat and wanted to make sure he got some nice movement on the cue ball. Just a little pinch here, not much. Got 
Got to float this now. This has got a little bit of an angle. Nice shot. Handled it beautifully. And as the 10 ball goes down, Appleton now has one. Gorst has two. Gets in on the board, trails by one as we head into rack four. Appleton, when he won his first match, had two breaking runs. Uh, when Gorst won his first match, he had five breaking runs. Most of you heard, but uh, coming into this match, Gorst had the highest TPA of the first round. He played a 9.49. Unbelievable. Another thing about Gorst, this is, of all the years he's come here and played, this is the first year he's of legal age to be here. Hmm. 21 years old. Is he not 22 now? Uh, no, no, not till the, not till okay. the, yeah, I asked him yesterday. <laughs> but well, no more need for the uh, fake ID. Nice connection there. More of what he's always looking for. Boy, looking great. Couple balls on the break. Nice shot on the one. And a comfortable layout. Once you get that first ball, you know, always the first ball of each inning uh, is, is so important to kind of regain your momentum and comfort level. Yeah, it really is something, you know, it's true about getting that first game as well. That first game, you just get a lot more relaxed after you get on the board. Okay, he's got an angle here. I don't think he floats for the corner. I think he comes down with the four hanging. He can handle a little bit thin on the three in the side. He may be able to kill it for the corner. That's what he'd like to do. Yeah. But I think he probably just comes down for the side pocket. He put a lot into that. Speed's got to be really nice catching two cushions. And look how good this is. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, what a shot. Very wow. narrow window. Two cushions. That requires good ball pocketing. You can't just cobble it into the pocket and get your ball speed right. You have to hit that pocket pure in order to ration out the speed to over that distance properly. Yeah, and just not a shot you practice very often, like a center ball just straight up and down the table there off the two short rails. Uh, it's a ball. It's a shot you'll shoot a little more often coming across the table, but not long ways very often. So really excellent, excellent control there from Fetter. These guys are so inspiring. After watching these matches, I can't wait to hit balls myself just to see if maybe I can capture a little, <laughs> a couple good shots here. It's kind of what I was talking about with Darren earlier, as far as you know, wanting to get back in the mix with the group of guys and and more coming uh, players of today's game it's it's, it's you'd w you want to be playing these guys and Darren's in the you know at the age and of course has the game to do so and it's nice to you know it's one thing that I always liked I got a little piece of a few generations of pool when I played competitively I, I thought that was a a pretty nice thing and a pretty lucky lucky thing to have he could come across here. I don't think he does. Yeah, keeps it simple. The seven's a little funny. Like to get just right on that line uh, in the center of the table, I think. Now, does the seven go by the ten, though? He looks tangled up. Yeah, if it goes by the ten, that's where you'd want to play it, I think, but I don't think it does. Right, and even if it barely does, you'd have to really fall on it perfect to make it a comfortable shot. Well, he's got the nice angle to pinch it up there near it. He could come one rail to the center and take the cut on the seven in the lower left-hand corner. It looks like he's just going to go f one rail or two rails across just past the side pocket and just back cut the seven. No, he's drifting downward. Yeah. Well, I guess the seven goes cleanly past the nine then. He wouldn't have played it that way if it didn't. Overhead will certainly fool you on that. Yeah, that's why I really like to be able to look at the table. But even from here, the table, you can see it might go by there. But 
it's not easy for us to distinguish, and it clearly goes through there cleanly and easily, or he wouldn't have played position that way. Well, he's pocketing the ball so clean, so smooth. The speed control's good because of it. Then your confidence comes up when you have that type of super accurate cueing where you're not fluttering balls into the pocket. Yeah, and like right there, you know, Fetter throws the cue on shots as well. Actually, the cue comes out of his backhand a little bit. And then he re-grips re it at times. Here's a break and run from Fedor Gorse. The dynamite Darren Appleton will have his break as we head into rack five. So a lot of pressure here now on Darren, even though it's early. And not so much the score line, not so much, you know, what his opponent's done so far, but he knows what his opponent's going to keep doing. And that's probably getting out with open tables. Okay, Daz, let the cue ball get away. Oh yeah. boy, yeah. And that, you know, that's usually from a little quick back and forth to me for the guys to be able to miss it that much. Now, when he did practice, I watched him practice several breaks. He lost the cue ball towards the side a few times. In his opening break, he did the same, dodged a scratch. But I think maybe trying to get a little much into him. Yep. Mark. Yeah, definitely. He tried to ramp up the power there, and then he ended up coming downward on the cue ball just a little bit and got that center of the cue ball slightly higher than the center of the one. And it bounded one hop on the slate backwards and over the side pocket onto the floor. Now, Fetter did look at the side for the two ball, but I doubt that's going to happen with the corner open. That corner looks like it makes it a little easier to get position on the two, on the th from the two to the three, excuse me. Nice little stun area between the five and eight, just one rail. This is a shot that players uh, need to really get a lot, you know, perfect it almost. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it gets it gets better out of a lot of situations, just not a super low tip, just a little below center, maybe a half a tip of left English. But really gauging hitting before the side and then letting the letting the ball grab. Seems routine, but it's really not. Okay, so probably comes side, maybe. He'll look for the corner. I may entertain forward for the opposite side as well. Just may look at it anyways. It looks like he can come two rails underneath the five pretty easily. He's going to back it up a little bit, though. I like that for the other side. And he's gotten a little in between, right, Mark? Yep. Yeah. It's a, now the cue ball's drifting away from your six ball and really doesn't pose a huge threat, but it's annoying because that's not the angle you wanted. Yeah. And, you know, if he gets an angle on the six, right, now he's got to come two rails with the eight in the way a little bit. So... This makes a huge difference, and he may play this in the corner and go short side. He may roll past the six. I don't know. Looks like he's just rolling it in the side. No, corner. And that was all out to make the ball. And he's going to have a heck of a stretch here. I don't think it's terrible, but it's a lot more than you think it is. He's a tall man. I could stretch pretty good, reach pretty good. And now he's a little closer to it than he would have been if he shot it in the side, right? So now he can kill his ball. If he shot it in the side, I think he would have had to contend with the eight, trying to go back and forth uh, from the six to the seven. A little flat here. 
Yeah, this uh, it's one of those funny spots. I mean, he's probably just going to back it up six inches. Well, he's not queuing low like he's Yeah, but he goes down, it. down on the ball, though. Yeah. See? Oh, he okay. He aims high and I see. comes down on the ball a little bit, like the old school players a little bit more. Well, he backed it up six inches, so however yeah. he got there. It's, no, it's that's, perfect. Yeah. yeah, that's where he was at, and it, this is – Anything else was not going to get you anything better than this, but you'd have to assume more risk. There again, this is just a little bit below center. Maybe a hair of left English, not much. Smooth. Yeah, and always attacking. That's the key is, you know, it doesn't uh, overhit the ball, but it's always, there's never a guide in the stroke, which in my opinion, is the key to pool. Just always be accelerating that cue. Well, I have to say, I, I haven't seen anyone's cueing action any smoother than Fetter Course, uh, especially at this tournament. It's uh, on point. This is years of work to get it to look like this. He always looked somewhat like this, but never this consistent. He'll have the break as we head into round six. Well, like I said, it's really just those reps. He just really relies on those reps when he's in the matches. Yeah. He keeps doing the same thing as in the practice room. And the thing is, is when you commit to that, right, at first it's not going to be exactly like the practice room. You're in the matches, right? It's just, but as, as you commit and you keep on doing it, it gets better and better. It gets closer and closer to the practice room, what the practice room feels like. And then one of the main things also is you get that mental state of just playing by yourself, uh, Mark. You know, when you're into those that process, right, those steps. Yep. You really start to just play the game by yourself, which I've always found I played my best pool when I get in that, that mindset. Now, it didn't break the best in his first. He shorted up in the second break off with a super break, a little over 20 miles an hour. Uh, a little off. You see the body move just a little early, so he's going to love the outcome, though. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a funny thing. Uh, you get better results on a consistent basis when you're accurate to the head ball. But sometimes I'd be practicing my break and then go super power and then glance the head ball, barely hit the rack. Three balls would go in. Uh, yeah. I'd crush them on other ones, and nothing would go in. I was like, well, this is the most maddening thing ever. I mean. Okay, so he's a little thin on the one to hold it with straight draw. So he may go to the side rail, in rail with a little kill, and then straight up to the middle of the table. He could draw to the in rail, just straight, straight low, and then draw off the in rail, one rail. I like, I kind of like the two rails with the hair of inside myself. Yeah, I think that plays much easier. And it's not a top English, really. It's more of a middle inside. You should easily get past the side, maybe. Maybe in between the first diamond and the middle diamond just past the side. I don't know if he's shooting it like that he anymore. He might be killing he's, it. He's, he's going left, so he's just going to the bottom rail then. Oh, yeah. yeah, like this. What a great shot. Yeah. That is a great shot there. Boy, you got to have th – that's one right there. When it travels that far, if you catch that pocket just a little bit thin over there, you're in the corner pocket down there. So you got to be confident with your ball pocketing. Well, yeah, and again, he – had a nice uh, aggressive stroke, nothing over the, over the top or anything like that, but really very athletic, I would say. Yeah. And, and sacrificing a little distance on the two, which was a smart play. Didn't try to get the most out of it. Our good friend Chuck Laird <laughs> checked in and said, isn't fed or something? And I have to completely agree with that assessment. Unbelievable. 21 years old, playing at this level. He's playing like someone that's been around the sport, you know, 40 years. Wow, he's looking to follow his ball one rail between the 6'10 here. I think that's what he was looking at. And this is the shot to hold your line. You have to commit to being smooth. If you worry here, you bounce off and maybe get into the 10 off the back rail. You have to commit to coming through this little part cleanly. You see how light he came through and just was confident that everything was going to hold up. Going to take the shot on the four. 
So he basically shot the shot like the six, seven, and the ten weren't even there, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and that's uh, that's once you commit, that's what you got to do. Good decision to not try to use two cushions too, because then when you add that extra speed and the side spin, your accuracy on the target is not as good. Yeah, and I liked uh, I liked what he saw. It was there, even though. Most would say it was a scary shot to go between those balls from some distance, but, you know, it's just a little bit different level we're out here on the Bigfoot table with, the, now with these 16 players, right? Look what he's accomplished here now. He got himself in, <laughs> taking a tough layout and made it look routine and from here on out. Well, you know. A lot of heat on Darren in this match. He knows what he's up against here. Yeah, so. yeah. it's not going to be uh, – Fetter's not going to falter much. So, now it's just up to you. And, and really, that's what Darren came here to beat was – he's not looking for stealing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came here to have – hope the guy plays good and then win there. That's, that's what makes it real sport. Looks like he's going high ball here, a little inside. And that's where you recognize the eight's off the rail pretty good, right? So you can handle quite a bit of angle. When the eight starts getting near the rail, things change a little bit. But you can really pull the ball, you know, off the eight a lot more coming back towards the ten before it hits that side rail, believe it or not, when the ball's off the rail a little bit more. And it, a lot of people panic in this. And watch him. He won't panic. This is pretty clean and easy. Yeah, beauty. <laughs> Smooth. Boy, that's the only word that comes to mind. So fluid on that transition from backswing to forswing. It's so fluid it's inspiring. Yeah, and it's... A lot That's of what we talked about That's yesterday really kind of matches up with coasting into position. You really don't have a lot of bad things happen. Oh, I kissed off this ball and that ball, and I scratched. I got unlucky. The way the top players move the cue ball around the table, it's just not a whole lot of bad things are going to happen. Darren, who knocked the cue ball off the table in his last. Yeah, 44 balls pocketed for Fetter Gorst with zero mistakes, bat <laughs> batting a thousand. Yeah. And the, the scratch on the break by Darren is, you know, com compounded by a break and run out right behind it. He carves through a tough rack, then he gets through this rack, and, and then he's showing no willingness to make a mistake. This is, yeah, this is tough, tough sledding. It's easy for Dynamite to let out a little frustration here on this rack but he's really got to pull on the reins here i think take a hair of speed off to be honest with you yeah and it's hard to do too when you're struggling well better hit for sure yeah he's still coming across it though and the one ball will always tell you that when the one's coming towards the middle you know they're usually coming across it from one side a little bit and that's how the one bounces not towards one of the pockets more now he's got a nice cut shot here. Nothing easy. I don't know if he can hold. I guess he can hold for the two, it looks like. Yeah, and I don't think there's not an easier option at all. or not, Everything you else you do besides try to hold for it makes it tougher. Yeah, and you can come a long ways. Don't think you got to come just past the head string barely. You can come a lot further. Oh, really good. Yeah, and he's still got a ton of work, though. He's got a heavy angle here. Can't go forward, it doesn't look like. The three is in a funny spot to get back for the four. It's not terrible or anything, but to get on it right here is tough. Can he stun around this ball? Yeah, it, but, boy, it's so narrow. I was just looking here on the overhead. You don't have a whole lot of room if you're going to try to wrap the corner two cushions. Yeah, and I think the edge of the eight comes in play a little bit. Uh, ooh, squeaked that one home a little. Good Overcut check. it a little. Maybe needed to use the pocket to get by those balls easily. I think so. 
Yeah, if he hits hard of the pocket, then I think the edge of the eight is definitely in play. Quality shot. Uh, a little more angle than he really needed, but I think he's okay. You cannot take any of these little shallow angles for granted on a five by ten, though. That they uh, they play so much tougher than on a four and a half by nine. Just because you're always traveling another six or eight inches. Uh, uh. Oh, that's what I meant. That's yeah. It's uh, it's unforgiving. And look how deep this ball is, boy. Feather's gonna have to make a good shot to get good position from here. He may be able to creep it out rail first, maybe. Mm-hmm. Now, he may just draw it back two or three inches and take the six in the side, okay? Just hit it full. Nice little light draw stroke to bring the ball out to, like I said, two to three, four, five inches. Take the six in the side. It leads you to the seven pretty easily. A lot of times the guys won't want to shoot that type of shot, but it looks pretty simple in guaranteed position. He looks to be going ball first. I thought he might opt the rail first. Yeah, I thought so too to get to the other side of the table. But yeah, that's this. I think that's the prudent play right there, Mark. And he got a lot out of the cue ball. You no, know, he really did. <laughs> that's a good solid stroke. He was still down after the cue ball hit the object ball. He wasn't flinching. Okay, really nice here, just keeping a barely any angle. That way he can pull back to somewhat full on the eight and not have to contend with the ten ball at all. So real nice play there on the six, not getting too thin on the seven, but still getting the angle. It's nice when everything's clicking, huh? Yeah. Oh, Mark. Yeah, my goodness. His ball speed is just impeccable because his accuracy into the pocket is impeccable. Yeah, Feder Gorst is a serious dude, too. I'm not saying he never smiles or anything, but uh, most of the time he's businesslike. Okay. A little bit of a choice. Most would just hit right before the side here and take the little cut on the nine. Yeah, just like that. That's the scary thing is the talent plus the work ethic. Like... Not just the work ethic in the practice room, but the work ethic like, oh, I'm going to work through the rack. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to mm -hmm. like, oh, let mm -hmm. me let me hit this a little better to make things easy. No, yeah. I'm, I'm going to yeah. work through the rack. Percentages are on my side. Yeah, great point there, Jeremy. Yeah. Many of us try to take a shortcut and get it easier, and then in, in so doing create unforced errors that weren't really necessary if I would have just worked harder. That ball looked like it boinged a little off the end rail, just a hair. He's still fine, but. Yeah, you know, you get a little out of line. You know, there's two ways to do it. Occasionally, you have to make it all up in one shot. But a lot of times, the smart guys, they'll just work a little harder on the next two or three or four shots to get back in line. And now Federer with a five-game lead. Another perfect out from Federer. Extending the lead now to five games, six games to one. He will be breaking. Okay. We might get another look here. The missed ball. Look at that. 50 balls pocketed, zero errors. Five by ten, four and a half inch pockets. There's that miss. Just slightly overcut it. You know. It almost went in. Yeah, a little more speed it probably does. Who knows? But he had to hold position on the six. But you know as well as I do, we talk about it with the Moscone or any slick table, TV kind of conditions table. The ball's cut a little easier. Um, just not much. Um, I don't know if you want to call it grime or dirt or mm -hmm. just anything that's that's working against the cut. There's not much of it on there. Yeah. And you'd be amazed how much thicker you can aim uh, at certain shots. And then sometimes what will get you is like Darren right there. You know when you're shooting a ball soft and you got to cut it, right? You're worried about the ball dragging and, and carrying with the cue ball a little bit. So sometimes you'll want to 
you know, without even knowing, you'll want to aim a hair thinner on the ball. And, and, uh, and then, again, in these clean conditions, the ball just cuts real nicely. So Yeah. Because yeah. Darren didn't seem too upset when he first let, let the cue ball go. Like, it, the delivery, he seemed pretty right. happy with it. And now Federer, uh, he didn't make a ball that he normally would make on the break, but he, he's made one and got a shot. Yeah, I love the way he thinks through every aspect here. He's never in a hurry. He's uh, right in his little uh, rhythm. Touchy shot. Doesn't want to have to try and kill the ball from distance with some inside. Don't blame him there. So he's going to take the angle and run with it a little bit, I think. Yeah, he's looking to go right between the 7 and 8 with the cue ball. Yeah, and if he bumps the 8, that's fine. So this won't be at a heavy speed. Pretty mild. Uh, he caught a little thick to the hole like you talk about, Mark. So our first mistake here on a position. And that was just, again, from catching it a little thick. <laughs> Still a quality delivery. Oh, yeah. It's hard to pick this kid apart, but, yeah. That's the closest thing to a mistake he's made. You know, the jump cue, I think there's there's regulations it should have. Maybe it shouldn't definitely be out of our game. That's kind of crazy. Uh, I don't mind playing a tournament where you can't use it or whatnot, but this guy right here is something fun to watch with it, I'll tell you, with the jump cue. I, under pressure, I think he's got to be the best in the world. Wow. Yeah, he was trying to do something more than just hit it. Yeah, but I expected him to, you know, be mm -hmm. successful with what he was trying, which obviously was the top side of the two. Yeah. You know, for me, on the jump cue thing, I, I understand the manufacturers like the product to sell and, and the casual fans get a kick out of it because they think it's something. But I enjoy it so much more without it. Uh, no, I me, think you know, I think it's a better game. I just I, – I think it's going to be included. So maybe regulate it somehow, maybe – Maybe you can only shoot it on your incoming shot if your opponent snookers you. You, you know, you you can't shoot it just whenever you want. You snooker yourself or whatnot. I don't know. I think there's a maybe a combination of of having it in the game, just maybe regulated a little bit. Okay, I'd, I'd probably make an easy decision and just come and play the five in the same pocket myself. I don't think I go twice. I'm afraid to get straight in. Yeah, I think that's a smart decision there. Yeah, and he handled that comfortably. And this is where it starts for Darren at 6-1. to one. He's got to take advantage on Fetter's break and when he gets that chance. A little of the eight, so he may still need that extension. A little stop shot here on the nine. Get Darren back on the board with an easy ten ball. Oh, he's kept the extension on here. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't want to take it off here for a moment, I guess. Hitting a lot of center balls, so it's okay. And good toughness there. Flex those balls. Two games to six. Cuts the lead down to four. Six games to two. You're never going to do great in a tournament unless you steal a match from here anyway. And not that uh, Peter Gorst is likely to struggle. All right, everybody, player timeout here. We will be right back. Okay, everybody, we are back. Appleton will be breaking, trailing two games to six.
Six and the five right behind the one. Took a little off. I like it. I don't know if it's going to make a ball or not. We'll see. But I do like the hit much more square. I think that's going to actually be beneficial if he sticks with it. That's the problem. But you can hit him good, and you don't have to make something, and then sometimes it gets you a little disillusioned right away, mm -hmm. and then you're trailing, and then you want to ramp up. But I think you're going to have to stick with this and take your medicine because I think that's the, the break that's the most likely to yield what we've seen other players getting. Yeah, and I like the square hit. And to be honest with you, early in this match, we've had a little cue ball problems from Darren on the break. We've had one off the table. We've had uh, two of them threaten the scratch in the side. So not only that, he hasn't really made a lot of balls hitting them hard as well. Right. So. It's just hard when you're trailing to not want to ramp up the power. You feel like you're not putting out 100%, but uh, I think it's, well, he's mature enough to understand, so. Yeah, ended up a little short here, making things a little more funny because he needs some inside English. The good thing for him is he can get a little thin on the three and work the ball because this bottom side of the table here is real open, right? So if he gets a little thin here on the three in the side, he's hoping he can pull this past the ten, and I don't know if he can from there. As if you can see, the right side of your table, very, very open if he can get the cue ball past the 10. He may have to go between the 10 and 4, huh, Mark? If he's that thin, then uh, that plays pretty well because he doesn't have to hit it very hard. Yeah, and now we'll see if he wants to check it between them or if he wants to go between them then back between them. So now he's looking at, can I beat the 10? I think with a high left, he can go between them and then s spread the cue ball to the other side of the 10, I think. Yeah. It's close. It's maybe not exactly easy. If you lightly rub the the side of the ten ball that the four ball's on, you're not likely to get hooked. And you know, yeah, there's, there's no scratch either, really, unless you hit it real hard or something. But the other side of the ten, now that if you try to go by it and catch it, you could scratch. You're not going to get hooked, most likely, but you could scratch. It's going to look right up and down, ready right between the four and the ten here. Takes a super precise ball pocketing. Oh, man, what a job. Yeah, and the speed. He knew there's some things that could go wrong, so he made sure he kept a, a nice light speed on it, knowing if he could catch a 10 going in or out, things could be bad. Yeah, he's making good decisions, and then he's supporting it with good execution. It's hard to beat. Everything very natural here, just everything about pocketing the ball. Five lays nice, six in the side, seven or eight, and eight or near. So. Could roll this to the end rail, could pull it two rails. It's up to him. He likes to pull the ball a lot, so we'll see. Can handle a little bit of an angle on the six. No problem with the seven. Very, very open. Probably the technically best play is just roll it in one rail. You know what I mean? But if you like coming to instead, that's fine like this. You know, I think that particular shot, percentage-wise, you don't get that cling or that drag where it tends to go a little forward. You don't get as many skids from it. I yeah, you're going to make the ball just way more often like he just shot it. I think that's where you're going with it, right? I think subconsciously it plays better for us because we just feel like we're more in control. Uh, yeah, we're, it, yeah know, the contact of everything. Yeah, Three or four percent more balls that way or something, so. Yeah, I was, I was just saying, like, if you're playing a video game, right, what's, yeah. the, like, the shortest route percentage-wise, yep. you would say just one rail. But realistically, when you're talking about, you know, feeling good about making the ball and and not necessarily, you know, what you have to do, but, mm -hmm. you know, what what's a little needed is all. And, and he could handle the six with a little angle. I kind of felt like he was probably going to pull the ball a little bit off that five. He prefers to shoot the shot like that, like most of us, actually. I suppose we, we use the medium speed way more often than we use the soft rolling speed, too, so we're also more confident with that. Yeah, that's your foundation. Says. That's, you know, when I help people with their pool game, one thing I tell them when they, they can do 
really nice for themselves is go go get a foundation of a medium speed swing. That's what you need. Because the good players, what they do is they go a little less than medium, a little more than medium, but they'd much rather move their tip position than, than really change the, the swing dramatically, right? They'd rather kill the ball with a little tip position or make it move with a little tip position rather than really, you know, guide the swing real softly or, or amp it up very, very firmly, right? Right, right. Kind of like golf, same swing-ish, yeah. change clubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we change clubs by changing our tip position and maybe shortening our bridge at times and doing little things mm -hmm. that change the shot to where you don't have to change the motion much. And the funny thing is a lot of players do it instinctively. They're never really taught that. Um, just, right. just years of playing and maybe watching some other players are never really taught that they shorten the bridge on light shots. They just kind of do it yeah. once you get the feel for it. Yeah, sadly for our sport, unlike golf, is that there's hardly any instruction available, you know, so it doesn't grow our sport the way it should. And then we don't have much aspirational to offer, so why work hard? I mean, just get a bigger handicap, you're fine. You know, and right. we reward mediocrity rather than excellence. But uh, those two things combined has conspired against our sport from growing the way it should. It's getting there, though. Yeah, I think we are starting to head the right direction. You got yeah. Raw Hannah doing things, and you're doing things. Well, I think there's a lot of guy, a lot of people. Period, and uh, you know, I think they're starting to realize that you know, just like golf, doesn't have to be just one way to get it done. I mean, there mm -hmm. are going to be always similarities between the great players, uh, but there's going to be some unique things between players as well, and it's hard to argue. All right, Darren needs some help here, but I don't think he's going to get it from Fetter. He made a good square hit. Oh, what a nice tickle off the one off and making the two. And <laughs> Is that not how it works when you're playing great? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing goes in except you get a weird double collision. Down I wish here. we had a camera on Darren's face right now. It's a classic Darren Appleton <laughs> face. Uh <laughs> <laughs> But I, I still head shake. Yeah, and the teeth, uh, the way he does the teeth, it's it's a funny. I've seen it before, but um, a twenty one point five for Fetter there on the gun, and I still think the guys with the higher speeds aren't going to get as much results here on this table. It seems like, and he's not getting the pop on the cue ball. Yeah. Um. So maybe he's not just hitting them exactly how he wants. Touchy little shot here when you're close to it like this. I just come one rail by the four, right? Keep it simple, very natural. No reason yeah, to do anything else. Yeah, that's the most else. direct path. Yeah, especially when you're close to it. You know, you start to put the inside; it doesn't develop as quick. Um, even outside, doesn't develop as quick. A lot of times, when you're close to it, if you can kind of center punch it once, one way or another. Yeah. Don't get off the center of the cue ball very, very much. I think it, uh, it helps. Okay, he wants to wants to pull the cue ball at least probably close to a foot closer to the four. That way he can get to the back side of the five if needed. Don't see him wanting to get to the other side of the five for the corner with the ten and the eight the way they are and the seven having the six covered up. I think he wants to draw back for the side. That's what I would want to do. And here he can use the rail, like mm -hmm. say if the line's nice, he can draw back and use the rail to come up into the five ball. Which really helps your speed control. Yeah, and it just helps the stroke, period, too. You make a little more confident stroke, and now he's ended up a little short. A little let up there, huh? Yeah. And I haven't uh, seen it yet, but that was the first one. It, it, it's really hard to be critical, but he's clearly short, and I know he would have liked another six inches out of that draw. And that's where if you can go all the way to the back rail and back up, it, that plays so much easier because you're not using that little small stroke that we don't use, much like we were talking about the top spin right. on the other end of the table. And then if you collapse the upper arm at the wrong time, it slows the cue down, and the, there's a, a whole host of things that enter into it. But even if you have, you know, whatever your stroke is, if it decelerates, you're going to have speed control problems. Yeah, and I think he's got to creep this into three rails for a long shot on the six. Oh, he could do one rail. 
Beautiful stroke there. Great recovery. He'd rather not be on the cushion. No, but he got a lot out of that. There was a more angle than it appeared on that five, and he got that cue ball to grab nicely. So that that always telling you the timing was good. Mm-hmm. Okay, stay steady, which is, I'm sure, one of Fetter's names, really. <laughs> steady, yeah. it's, or it should be, steady. All right, very consistent guy. Yeah, steady may be the, a very accurate one, maybe not as complimenting as it should be. Great is, a, is another one you can label with Fetter Gorst. Yeah, he really, he really, uh, you know, expresses and uh, you know, really is the definition. A lot of those cliches that carry through through the years in pool and a lot of sports, you know, one shot at a time. Yeah. Um, you know, process, you know, just, just what, it, what any of those cliches that have stuck around for hundreds of years because they are very important. He kind of exhibits that in my opinion. And we talk about his work, work ethic all the time, but, you know, one thing we don't talk about as enough is he's just a phenom. I mean, you know, there's not only the work ethic and all that, right, but, I mean, he's just one of those special individuals that you just don't come across all the time. No. Uh, tremendous enthusiasm and drive for excellence. It's, it's remarkable to me. Yeah, but even at this young age, and you can work a lot of kids out, right, but, you know, how how do they simply say it? He gets it. You know, he understands it. And it, it doesn't take long for him to understand something new as well. Yeah, his passion for pool is uh, unparalleled. And now stretching out the largest lead that I've seen on the Bigfoot this week. It's going to be six games at eight to two. Third break and run out of the match. He's playing pretty good anyway. I think he only has one error thus far in the match. What's his TPA? Nine seven there? three for nine seven three is all. Yeah, and the all score right. will the TPA will kind of really show the score there. Seventy two balls pocketed, two errors made. Well. Yeah. Uh, you gotta rack the ten in the middle there, Darren. Mm -hmm. There you go. So Federer's got Darren a little sideways at the moment. Uh, we, we know that Feeder is going to play great, so it's just up to Darren to play his game and not worry about it. You're not going to win 10 games in one stroke anyway. So Yeah, and a lot of those, you know, things we were talking about, Feder, you know, Darren is right in that same class, a very incredible individual to win so many different disciplines in our sport and yeah. at the highest level too, not just, oh, I – I did win a straight pool tournament, or I did win right. this. You know, <laughs> you're talking about the Years. biggest ones of the Chinese eight ball and the well, ten yeah. ball, and, and that's just how the match has gone. A kiss on the cue ball there. Golly, yeah. everything conspiring against him at this point. He, <laughs> Feder gets the kiss to make the two ball. Yeah. Darren gets the kiss to make the cue ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Matches go like this, and that's what – when you play in the, with the big leagues here, uh, things happen. You know, you're up yeah. against it. Yeah, and the thing is that Fetter and Darren are, you know, good friends, I'm sure, and know, know each other pretty well, but Fetter can't let up. Uh, you know. Here's another look at the break. He parks the cue ball nice. Yeah, two kisses, one on the – a shave on the one and <laughs> a heavy one on the three, and the tongue out for Darren out at the mouth. But Cruel. You know, Fetter is a super nice guy as well, but a fierce competitor. And easy to feel a little bad for Darren, you know, of course, to have a, a, a unconscious let up. But the one thing is he he knows Darren can turn this match around quickly. So oh, he's you're not going to see any guy. let up from Fetter. Yeah, no May way. have to draw this ball here because he wants to get heavy on the three. He doesn't want to have to cut the three and go up and down, even though it is possible. So a little stun with a hair spin. Like that. And that's the shot under pressure 
that he makes look easy. And for me, even, I, I feel like that can get away from me very easily. Mm hmm. Well, much like we were saying with Jason Shaw, it just comes down to if you pocket 9,000 balls a week, boy, do you ever get a good feel on shots like that. And if you don't, you're always, if you hit the pocket thin, that cue ball comes off there, you know, twice as hot as anticipated. You just have to put your time in. Yeah, the one thing that I wish, you know, we had is, is kind of like, it's hard to repeat the feeling you get when you're playing well. You know, like, oh, man, how did I feel? How do I get that feeling back? And I think that's maybe something you shouldn't try for, but it's something that I would like to be able to do. <laughs> yeah. I think that the playing gets you into that feeling more than the feeling gets you into that playing, right? Right. All right, he's got to come back somewhat heavy. Six doesn't pass the nine. So to be accurate getting from the five to the six, he doesn't want to be too thin on the five. I don't know if that's going to get where he wants. Yeah, he can go by the ten now. He got just enough to go by the ten and get back up for the side pocket. I think, anyways. Maybe not. Yeah, that ten's a <laughs> pretty imposing ball. Now, does there. he have to shave the ten and come one rail all the way down? Boy, he'd rather avoid that. Well, I don't know if he can avoid the 10 or not, yeah. but that, that's what I thought he was trying to come down and get heavy on the 5 so he could avoid the 10 ball. That 9 is really an obstacle. It, it makes him play for the side pocket or the far corner. I think he, with a hair of outside, he's okay to come one rail down. But then the speed you need to hit, it might. Yeah, you just got to feel it. You got to feel how much 10 you're going to catch. Does the 10 cross corner here at all? No, it might be. You might be right. He might be able to avoid. No, he couldn't even come close to avoiding it. So he yeah. went inside spin. Yeah, he Look went with the hit. What right? a shot. What yeah. a shot. Beauty. Oh, man. And now a nice three rail angle wow. around the nine. The thing is, he's going to end up a hair thin on the seven, it looks like. It looks like the nine's impeding getting really nice. Oh, he's banking it. He's banking this. Wow. So that tells you a lot about the cue ball. He hmm. didn't, yeah, sweet what shot there. What a nice there. choice. Now there's that, that hit that we got to see there on the replay. Inside spin. Good decision making. Great execution. He has all the tools. And then he's got that uh, great uh, focus to go with it, that intense focus. This type of smoothness is only achieved through countless hours of hitting these balls. So you know the feel of making each one of these shots. It's not something that you can just mentally create. This one got away from him, though, Jeremy. A little bit. He wanted to be more around that opposite spot, and that's kind of really where he wanted to be. The good thing is it's not terrible. And this is where that maybe that extra room on the rail really helps on a shot like this, meaning he can let his stroke out with the low left a little bit, mm -hmm. knowing that, that pulling this ball in the corner on the 10-footer is pretty hard to do. There's, there's not many uh, benefits to the 10-footer <laughs> yeah. making shots easier, but this might be the time. Yeah, you because know. you get to let the stroke out a little more and know you can come back to this side rail and never really have a chance of scratching in the corner. Yeah, he can come as deep as he wants, and it's just not really possible. Now, he hit it super clean, that's for sure. I think he dropped the cue ball kind of exactly where he wanted. <laughs> yes, I think he did too. Nine two is our score, and it's been all Fetter Gorst. Yeah, Darren, you know, made a couple of mistakes. He, he'd love to have back early a cue ball off the table there on a break was huge, but um, really, it's been all Fetter Gorst, and you can see these TPAs at nine seventy six and seven seventy one. But balls pocketed is a glaring uh, stat you can see, and and from there, not only did Fetter has played so great, but he's gotten a few rolls too. 
uh, or the benefit of a few break break things. You know, like you said, the two ball got kissed in at the last moment, right next to the one for a break and run. Darren's cue ball gets kissed in on the break. So it's just been a few things. I think the four ball that Darren overcut, that was really the, the turning point in the match. It was still early. He's only down a couple games. He was at the table. I believe that was on Fetter's break as well. Oh, that's the speed he wants. I don't know if he's going to make one or not, but the side pocket speed, I think, uh, the ball's going in the sides. That's the speed. Yeah, 19-4, that's a little more of what we've seen mm -hmm. uh, as far as success. Yeah, and good ball action. There's five five balls that the side pocket are passed. Yeah, uh, again, difficult for Darren, though. Nice shot on the one. Three doesn't pass the six, so he's going to have to get to the back side of the three going by the five. So where do you do that from? You almost got to come down and get a little heavy on the two, to, in my mind. Can he hit right before the side here, come down and catch the bottom rail, a little bump off the bottom rail, and then draw draw off of uh, – we get the monitor here. The we get the overhead real quick. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying get in this area here and then draw off the two back here for the three. He decided to play thin, so that means he's going to run around the four maybe. This is tough. This is inside English around the four from some distance. Easy to catch the rail first here and go right into the four. Yeah. I'm surprised he wasn't a little more aggressive with you the get, cue ball. You got to be pure here. And then plus, it takes power. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's oh, tattooed the four. Yeah. And that's why I say, you know, one thing to shoot that from close range, right? Because you know you're going to hit ball first, right? Real nice. But from distance, man, that was tough. And. I would have been a little more aggressive on the one myself, trying to come down and get a little heavier on the two. All right. Yeah, that's a nice shot. Yeah, it looks like perfect speed. Or, or really nice. That yeah, was a crafty veteran play there. Got separation. Did it with a uh, high degree of probability of result because it was a conservative swing didn't try to move the balls too much yeah and it's amazing to me how how great the they are on those types of shots with the control of the object ball the speed on the object ball that's no, it's not something you practice all the time moving the object ball in certain places um, especially playing uh, being rotation players this has gotten super tough, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can he get yeah, the sixes in the way, going by the seven? The nine's dead in the way. Not sure how he attacks this kick shot. Be one heck of a swerve around the nine. Yeah, this is tough here. Whew. Well, I think the best shot, I don't know if we can grab the overhead real quick, but if we can, I think if you have to kick, I think it's here with – Low, low right. Yeah. Yeah, trying to bend and it. To bend it back in there. You got to yeah, hit it's it. Actually, it actually kind of arcs. Yeah, this. you have to <laughs> hit it a little mildish just so it allows to take the spin, right? Boy, there's almost no piece of the three to hit here. And if He's you do hit, you're going to scratch, right? Top side of the three, you're going to scratch. What a shot. Oh, wow. What a shot. I mean, yeah, it didn't have a good result, but that no. was a very, very narrow. And if you add any speed to it, it doesn't work at all. Yeah, and he was actually, I think, trying to come across it thick, bank it up a little bit, let the cue ball maybe coast behind the five. There wasn't much thick to hit, though. No, there wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't at all. All right, pay attention here, Darren. Nice shot. This is far from over, that's for sure, with Darren Appleton at the table, but we can all look forward a little bit to the next one. Jason Shaw and SVB at 3.30-ish. Interesting point here that uh, I just learned about. Uh, the TV crew from 60 Minutes is here to do a little thing on pool. Yeah. So heard, that's pretty cool. Heard that yesterday. Looks like the seven passes the eight. So probably stuns behind him a couple rails. Now he's going with a high ball, so maybe he's coming for the side. I don't know, just one rail for the seven. Falling a little on the 
funny side of it. So he's got to work the cue ball. And a little quick. Didn't get quite as much out of the draw he, as he wanted, but probably comes back for the side here. And this isn't so much about getting the easier shot. This is a more about the cue ball path is going to be nice and clean, right? Like there's no worries. Is he going to get there? Well, got, got a little, little straightish. Hmm. Still okay, though. The 10's a very playable ball. Cheat the pocket if he wants to go to the rail. Good shot there. Got the maximum out of there. Had to hit it with high velocity. Stunned that over. Oh, he's elevating. Wow. Yeah, sometimes, you know, that shot plays just a hint easier if you elevate and go with power rather than roll. Um, I'm usually a roll guy, but uh, I'm also in the broadcast booth, and they're down there playing, so maybe there's a little... Well, it's to me, a lot of times it's the feeling, right? If I'm feeling good, I just level out, right? But if a little question mark, I ain't going to lie, I'll elevate sometimes yeah. on those and want to shoot them a little more. But to me, i just seen Darren play so much. kind of felt like he was going to level out and roll that ball in. Let's see if the pool gods will give him a little, a little kindness here on the break. It hasn't been so sweet for Darren. Be fun to see him put together a couple games here. Show us the real Darren Appleton. But this is going to happen in sports. It doesn't matter how good you are. You're going to have times where the other team is great and they just take it to you and you just don't have a chance. And that's what it's been so far. Truly, we, we, we don't know if Darren's playing good or bad. He hasn't had enough turns, and there's the one ball hanging deep in that pocket that hangs balls deep the last two days. That's right. Look at that thing. <laughs> I mean, it, it's in so deep, it's murder to play position from. Going rail first here, you can easily miss the entire ball. Yeah, you're going to catch that other point, too, which makes it very unpredictable. He'd love to just get this out and take the long shot on the two. It's yeah. Not, it's not going to be easy with the three a little covered up by the eight he can get shape on the three but getting an angle on the three to get to the four not easy so this first shot he'd love to draw his ball out i don't know if he can get enough of the ball to right. simply draw it right? right right you can't hit it square enough to just draw straight back he's just playing a very mild shot cue ball off the point a little bit right here yeah just trying to get oh wow that tells you how deep it was yeah, and they really just didn't know what was going to happen it seemed like hard to tell sometimes <laughs> Well, that's the type of thing that uh, can help Appleton to kind of reassert himself into the match. I think he may have a little piece of the two. I don't know if he can make it. Oh, he's having to curve. Maybe even jump the ball. I think he's curving it, though. He's going to love this outcome. Oh, wow. I think anyways. Yeah. Well, I mean, no matter what, he didn't scratch. He left it tough. <laughs> I think he can get the entire ball. Could chip the side of it and try and come down behind the six, let the one, two come out to the middle of the table a little bit. When you're, you know, so far away from it, digging on the ball elevated pretty hard. I like leveling out here and coming across the top side of it and, like, trickle the cue ball by the six. You're going to leave one tough shot if you do leave a shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, he hit it pretty firm. That's got to really play the object ball a little light. I think, anyways. Yep, a little light. So, Bet Fetter attacks here, tries to go off the five and gain position on the six, on the three that way.
I think you're fighting it here, Mark, if you don't go into the balls. Uh, I, he'd love inside and go into the eight, but that may be asking a lot. Yeah. I, th I think just going into the five, I think, really gives you a good percentage to glance over for the three. You get to stroke the ball nicely. Is he trying to go three rails with a hair of outside here? Looks like he's winding up with power. Yeah, that's what I mean. Three rails with a hair of outside here. Yeah. Wow, what a shot. That was a shot. <laughs> Man. <laughs> that would be, uh, if I knew anything about golf, I'd know what I'm saying, but that would be like sticking a three iron in there <laughs> off the fairway. <laughs> like, holy cow, he smoked that. I mean, you'll stick to the baseball analogies. Okay, yeah, maybe better. Okay, he doubled in the gap. Yeah. With the bases loaded. Yeah, right, a little better. Don't know how much power he's going to try and get out of this. He's so good, I thought he'd just pitch it back and take the cut and work from there. But looks to me like he's trying to go forward. So if this ball hooks, he could scratch. If it, You know what I mean? If it hooks a little on him. I feel like he's going to rethink this. Well, he's trying to come between the eight and nine. I understand. <laughs> but just what you said, boy, you got to hit that pocket pure to maintain your angle. Well, the key is he just needs the angle on the four, so he doesn't have to get all the way back down. Even just laying in between the eight and nine is good enough. Uh, caught that point. It did hook a little on him. This is still playable. Five goes by the six, so if he comes around four rails and gets short side, kind of mm -hmm. where the cue ball's at now, it's not terrible. Yeah, you don't want – this is a shot that's thin enough. I don't think you're going to go with slow speed because at this distance, and it's kind of one of these, I want to make sure I get the four ball down. Straight high, right? Yeah. You may come two rails at the 9-5, which is exactly. just fine. Exactly. You just want to make sure you get the four ball down, and you'll take whatever you get. He's putting a little spin on there, a little left English. So is he coming between the eight and nine doing that? He did use spin. And he overcut it and scratched. Yeah, overcut the four just a skosh. All right. Well, I'm not against photo, but I do want to see Darren show us what his game's all about. Referee Dwayne Payne. Does a good job. Hands Darren Appleton the cue ball after polishing it a bit. Confident strokes this rack. You get where he needs to follow this ball out two rails a little bit. Maybe drawing it's not going to get enough on the ball. Oh, it looks like he's drawing it. Okay. Well, he got plenty of that. Yeah, he sure did. Made sure of it. And good job there. Nine four is our score. Ben Appleton to four now. A couple of early mistakes and then some serious misfortune. And then the fact that the other guy has only made three errors throughout the match. Four games one is still a pretty good result. Leading nine to four. Yeah, yeah. there. A rack track. Darren's first two games in a row here late in the match, or what we consider most late in the match, but. Nine to four now. He's got to dodge a few things on Fetter's break, of course, and then fully capitalize when he gets his shots. 
Yeah. That's all you can do is just be prepared to make the most of each rack, each opportunity. Can't worry about the score. And we learn so much about who you really are, too, when, when you're down like this. This reveals your character. Oh, yeah. And I do know some pro players that quit here. They just go through the motions. Yeah. They, they don't apply themselves. And sometimes they even get themselves back into the match in kind of a give-up stroke mode. But then they can't take it off because you can't switch that back on. Good square hit. Five down. Cue ball lurking towards the corner. I think he's going to get a cut shot on the one, though. 19-5. Do think over 20 is really hurting you, for most of the guys anyways. He's got that same thin hit on the one here. He's had a few times in this match. Can he draw by the, the like in between the 9-10 to the bottom rail and then back up for the two? That looks like the path to me. Like it's the same shot he hit early in the like match. Like a center draw this time, though. You don't want left, really, but. Even though you pick up a little left. Yeah, you will impact. a little bit, yeah. Should come off the ball, though, by the time the cue ball gets to that bottom rail. That's a good nine feet away. He may be looking at <coughs> something else. I didn't think he could level out and roll the ball here, and maybe he can. Now he's, yeah, that's what he's doing. I think it, it just goes by the side pocket if he hits the pocket clean, so he's just going to roll it. Yeah, well, that's the best shot if he can do so. No, he's not rolling it. Yeah, interesting path there. And maybe he didn't want to take risk with using half the speed and have it lightly scuff the end rail and hang. So right. he wanted to make sure he got that ball down and just figured that he will defend himself from here. Yeah, it's touchy. Right, but it was, he also took a chance if it scuffs that object ball a little bit light, sometimes he can still scramble out from there, and he didn't figure to get hooked, so he knows this no, is a yeah, part, yeah, part yeah. of it. So, Otherwise, you just play safe on the one because you have much closer proximity. Oh, boy. <laughs> Gorse gives up nothing. Zero. Uh, not much, usually. Yeah. You're going to have to earn every opportunity. One of our fans, Alan Huseman, checked in, asked if I would update if there is something that goes down with the 60 Minutes crew, and we certainly will as soon as we learn anything. Jay Helfert was here with them. He said that they were going to be doing some filming. He thought during the next match with uh, Shaw and Shane Van Boning. He's got to swerve this if he goes by the three, it looks like. I don't think he can hit past the side unless he really digs on the cue ball. So. Not an easy kick, even though it's the type of kick you feel pretty good about. But and He's gone through his extension already, now approaching 15 seconds on the shot clock. So he's going to have to get something going here shortly and quickly. And before the side here, a lot of spin. Uh. Yeah. Nice yeah. hit, but disappointing outcome. He was hoping for something more favorable. And it looks like he's going to stun two rails uh, by the six and take a little bit of a shot on the three. The four near, nothing wrong with that. Don't think he rolls into position here. I think he cues downward on this. You know, tips a little below center. He'll hit a little lower than that, though, when he strikes, coming back where he's standing. Yeah, you know, just get the get the shot in that regard, especially, you know, Fetter's had a couple situations here in the last few games where he, he got a little out of lines, right? So get it back to simple and solid and, and do your thing. Got the great stance, the great cueing action. Yeah, there's you know just all classic. <laughs> all kinds of opinions on builds and pool, right? For but for me, that's like the typical perfect 
<laughs> build for me. Angular, As, lanky. Lanky, long, yeah, just, you know, everything seems to match up. Nice high right elbow uh, at a dress. Um, you know, length is power as well, right? Yeah. That's just math is all that is. Uh, so it gets a little extra easy power being a little longer. and Got that a little thick. Still okay, though. Good clearance with his cueing, so uh, the cue flows straight. He didn't encounter his ribs with his grip hand early. Yeah, and the, and the great thing about Federer, right, and this is just from knowing him and being around him, and he's as he's playing, he's learning. He's processing. You know, he's he's figuring out some percentages uh, that, that he knows are going to benefit him later on, maybe the next match, maybe the next rack, but he's always on his toes about things. Oh, yeah, he's a great student. I oftentimes relate one of them. I first encountered him, he played his match out here, and then him and Maxime were sitting in the crowd looking at their phone, watching the next match on the 5x10, but watching another match. Looks like he's drawing this back. It's been a bit one-sided, but for good reason. This guy's just putting on a clinic. Yeah, here we are, uh, 14 games into it. He's playing 950. Is that what that says? Yeah, 950. Yeah. And yeah. Fedor Gors. Right where he was at field. in his Two first match, 949 is what he ended at. We'll have the break, heading into rack 15. Well, I must say, I've never seen anyone put up these type of uh, statistical numbers two matches in a row, and it's been very rare I even saw one match on a 10-foot table. What's he got? 95 balls pocketed with five errors. And really, three of those errors came in the last few games, just missing position a little bit. See that 95 and 5, and so for anyone that wants to figure out their statistics, you take your errors and you add them to your total balls pocketed, which gives you a total of 100, and you divide the 100 back into 95, which produces a .950. And if you ever play anything above 900, you are a world-class elite player. Uh, 850, and this is on a nine-foot table, is pro level on the 10 foot table if you're 870 that's world class elite on the 10 foot table if you're 820 you're a pro pretty nice shot i don't think he's gotten left in that gap it's real close he can jump a sliver of the six with no problem though I don't know about the, the four so much because it's a distance away, but he can definitely, definitely jump the sliver of the six without any question. The way he's acting, though, is he can get through there and maybe get to the left side of the one. Does he have to subtly curve to get to the left side of the one? I don't think so. If he's well, playing it this way, I don't think he wants to curve it. If he can no, he doesn't it. want to, but I'm saying does he? Did, did he have to just to get at it? It doesn't appear so. Oh, he could see a lot of it. I thought he could barely hit the edge. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get a sucker <laughs> from nowhere. Rolling along. Now, Darren took the extension off. I'm wondering why. It appears he's snookered and he's kicking at the one. 
Just wondering what was just a high ball. It looks like uh, why why the extension came off of that shot. I just trying to learn really, but. Oh, you mean used his time extension? No, no, oh, off the, the back extension. of his cue. Yeah, oh. he, he took it off. Yeah, he had the small extension on. Good hit. Uh, really good. He could bank the one down and come right back into the two easily. Looks like it lays real natural to get the one on the end rail. Just one rail into the two with the cue ball ish, something like that. Yeah, I like that. You got so many good Boy. things that can happen. What a good execute uh, safety there from, you know, that two ball was oh, a diamond. At least diamond and a half away. The good thing about the shot, though, with a high ball, it's really just making about the cut on the one, which matched up with the shot to come float yeah. into the two. So you get a good feeling for it. Uh, and, and when you're back behind a ball so far away, anytime you can shoot a shot that you're leveling out, right? He's just basically rolling his ball right there. So, right. you know, his margin for error is going to grow tremendously rather than cueing downward on the ball or adding some side spin. Darren's wondering when he's going to get a little bit of a break. <laughs> yeah, this is unforgiving. I think the one goes by the nine, so better being the, uh, like all the greats, stays aggressive. I would think he's going to want to shoot at this. Maybe not. Well, it looks like he's playing the safety, behind, putting the one behind the nine. Cue ball down here. And again, middle of the end rail with a lot of safeties, right, Mark? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's trying to introduce the clutter. It looks like he might have, well, no, he was successful. The four balls for sure blocking direct access. He's looking to see if there's a sliver available. Whew. That's rough. Does get tiresome kicking, too, every time he comes to the table. Yeah. And with the six there, you know, he can get at it, but it, he's got to manipulate it a little bit. Okay, he can see this ball. Where's the cue ball going to track to? The five's there. Yeah, what, you know? yeah, this is rough. Oh, he can see a lot of it. He banked that ball back down. That worked out pretty good. Well, he's left him a tough shot if the one goes. Of course, if it does go, you don't want to bet against better making it. No, I thought I the 10 got him. Okay, you know, uh, he's down like he maybe can make it. So that would be brutal because then Fetter, Fetter could just hit a stop shot. <laughs> if you go for it and just lightly graze the 10, you can luck the 10 in. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, this, I wouldn't say it's going to be Mach 5, but he won't slow roll this. This will be shot a little bit. Won't be a light draw either, I don't think. Yeah, still isn't easy for Daz. He falls with inside. Got to have a really good touch and line on the cue ball. Wouldn't mind stunning twice back and forth just underneath the five, getting the cue ball back to this side of the table here for the two, but still it's a touchy shot. It gets into it a little much. Uh, he catches the five and could be real trouble, so probably a high ball here. Speed's crucial, Mark. And he got into the five. He got too much into it. Quality stroke, he hit that ball so pure, <laughs> the cue ball really arced off of there. Yeah, and with the slick felt, you just never know how it's going to arc. You know, at that speed when it hits ball and rail so quickly, right? Yep. You just don't know how it's going to arc exactly with the top English, so it's a little bit of guesswork, especially when you need speed. You know, if he could have smoothed it, I think he hits his line easily. Everyone wants to see Darren kick this ball in, keep the match mm. going. Yeah, me too. Yeah, 
twice cross side, cross corner. Yep. And it's not going to slide for him. It's just going to hold up for, for Fetter. And the way these lay, this should get Fetter to the final four. Super soft speed. Yeah, the balls are all wide open here. And it's yeah. gonna it's gonna require a complete meltdown here for Feder to not win from here. Yeah, besides this three ball, the eight and the ten are the only ones a little bit away from the pocket. Everything else is within just inches of a pocket. So yeah, doesn't look like uh, we're going to see too much more of Darren here on the big foot. We'll see plenty of them this week, though. OK, you can make a choice here. You can come down for the side. You can hit spin this with the inside and play the five in the corner with the six over the other side. Kind of up to you. Just make sure if you're coming down for the side pocket, you're in complete control. Now watch, see how he broadened the angle. He didn't come right at the 8, right at the 10. He broadened the angle to help with his speed control, knowing the 6 is very handy and yeah. he can move the cue ball off the 5. He's he's made that decision a multiple amount of times in this match so far where he gave himself a great target to hit. Rather yeah. than try to be, he doesn't need to be close to the 5. He just needs to have that position on the 5. And it makes total sense of coming down for the side if you're going to think that way. And, you know, that's something you learn kind of instinctively. Broadening that angle makes total sense. What also it does, it usually makes you be able to stay a little more aggressive and mm -hmm. thorough with the stroke. Uh, you're not trying to be tentative with pos position or speed control. So, I, I, you know, I think Darren played better than the score line. I think some rolls, a uh, little more opportunities could have could have changed things. But you still got to tip your hat to this kid at yeah, the table say, right here, yeah. I'll tell you. Playing and so will Darren. Nothing you could do. And I think these three balls here may get him towards that 949 he had in the first match. I don't think it's going to get him all the way there. but <laughs> no. But to stay, you know, 940 uh, at a higher than a 940 clip here uh, on the 10 footer through two matches. Oh well, yeah, and yeah. I think I think he's incredible. Gonna, I think he's going to do more of it as as we go along. So he top inside just because he stretched. Perfect speed, and I wouldn't doubt this one's conceded. Uh, well. Yeah, I think he's going to get to 945 here with this ball. High quality performance for sure. Match ball. Fedor Gorse moves into the semifinal round. Now that was an amazing $4, performance, a 945. Let's hear for Fedor Gorse. Okay, That's on behalf of Jeremy Jones and there. myself, thank, thank you for you sharing your time. Appleton Please join us again. Uh, That's our time well. for this time. So Until Fedora next Horse time, so long. To the final four.